Hi and a big welcome again to Drink in the Hand Art, our next video. And this time, because we're moving into the festive se season, I thought I would actually try uh, a real drink rather than uh, rather than another mug of tea. So cheers. I also thought, uh, because last time we looked at painting uh, um, a clear glass vase, that this time we could, uh, because it's a festive season, we could try painting a bottle of wine and then a glass, a clear glass uh, of wine as well to go with it and achieve something like this. I don't know if we can do that because I do think, I find this quite quite difficult and I don't quite understand all the principles but again I'm hoping that if we try together we might might make some might make some progress. Part one of this video will be painting the wine bottle and then uh, part two will uh, will be to put in in the wine glass. Okay so again this is building on uh, one of the uh, Bob Burridge uh, classes that I attended online so again do look look for his online classes um, uh, yourself and um, and as Bob would always say start with uh, with the materials we're going to use so today I'm using an A4 canvas uh, I bought this one I think a long time ago probably five years ago from the works it probably cost a pound and I've just painted over it with some orange so that it, partly to stop me feeling nervous about painting it gave me something something to do and partly so that there's a color on it so when i paint over it the painting immediately looks more interesting it looks like it's got some got some depth and uh, then bob would say what what colors uh, he would be using and for this one literally we're going to use the colors that are, are on um, are on this bottle. I think this is meant to be a bottle of red wine, so um, we need some kind of green. And I've just used green from an old tube of ac acrylic paint that I found. I think these paints are even older than the than this. I think they are ten years old, but they're still um, still good and very must have been very inexpensive. So, but still using just the, um, a green but equally if I didn't have green I would have just put out a blue and a yellow and um, uh, I am going to use some blue in the uh, in the body of the bottle so I've got uh, an ultramarine blue and uh, I'm going to use some red to give the impression of red wine and then a secret weapon for painting bottles of red wine that Bob told us about and it really works like magic and it's this this is and for me it's a neon pink but I think what he was talking about was some kind of bright pink so and I was very surprised that he would use this to suggest uh, an impression of a bottle of red wine but it really works like magic so I would recommend that you try try to get some of that and then uh, in addition I've um, so uh, in addition to the reds I've got uh, some titanium white as usual and some black I've also got a little splash of yellow and you'll see here there's a bit of yellow just to uh, give the impression of the light hitting hitting the um, hitting the bottle but not very much of that Okay, and in terms of brushes, and remember Bob always says use big brushes, so I've got a big brush, uh, and the other I've got another flat brush, which is probably about half an inch, and then I've got a couple of um, stubby little brushes that I just just found to um, to to use, and then I have got my faithful very small brush for um, doing some some of the detail. Bob would not approve of this one at all, but I just can't resist using it occasionally. Okay, so let's get let's get started. So Bob says when you are painting a wine bottle, you start with just three strokes. So I've got my water here and some green, and literally, let's see, I'm going to 
I'm going to put the wine bottle to one side so that there will be room for the wine wine glass. So start down the middle here. Probably haven't got enough green on the thing. And then I'm going to do a stroke either side. The other great thing is if you don't get this exactly right, if you feel you've gone too tall or too short, um, and I'm rubbish at working out what the proportions of a wine bottle should really be, it doesn't matter because when you paint the background, you can you can change the shape of the wine bottle. I think Bob would then be filling in the shoulders here a little bit just to make it a bit more curvy. And making this into a round at the bottom. So that's the basic shape of our wine bottle. I can already see mine's a bit skew whiff, so I'm sure you can do you can do better than that. And then I think what he will do is he would perhaps remove some of this in the middle because you want to be able to really get some other other colour in there. And I might use one of my bits of kitchen towel to help with that. And now I'm going to, and I can't really see the logic in this because obviously we think we're painting some red wine in this green bottle. But Bob keeps this as a very dark, dark blue initially. So I'm going to mix some ultramarine um, blue with some black to make it a dark blue. And I'm going to start painting that in. In fact, that just looks black to me. Maybe try and get a bit more blue in there. Painting that maybe two thirds of the way round the bottle. Again, here we're pretending that the light is going to come from the left to right. So this is different from anything we've done before. Even though the light is coming from left to right, the dark bit is on the side of the light. That's what I meant. I didn't really understand the logic, but I'm still going to do just what, um, what Bob told me to do. This should be a bit curvy because it's meant to suggest the, um, you know, the top of the actual of the actual wine. So what I've done here is I've gone two thirds across with this um, with this bluey um, bluey black colour, and now we are going to see a little bit of the red wine. So I'm going to use one of my reds to start off down here. Put some bit in here. And then <clears throat> I'm going to use a bit of the neon pink and put it in the bottom right hand corner. And again, I don't understand why, but I think what happens is that the light comes in, goes through the wine and it escapes out of the bottom of the wine glass, in, wine bottle in some way. And that makes the wine color looks this look this bright pink. We could put a bit of red um, where, where <laughs> if you're like me, the only bottles of wine that I buy are um, we have those screw tops on, so they're not posh ones that I buy. So I can put a screw top um, on the top of my of my wine bottle there. Just put some red there. Um, Bob teaches to put a little blob of red on the glass as well on the shoulder here somewhere.
again I don't know why but I think what would be that would be a bit of reflection of the wine into the glass um, in some way um, and then he would put and again you see I'm just using this half inch brush all the time then he would put some white on the uh, on the neck of the of the bottle I think he might kind of smudge it in because I think the light is diffuse here um, diffuses and spreads across the across the glass put some on the shoulder here maybe on the left hand side of the um, of that as well and then maybe a tiny bit then the left hand side to show that the light is catching actually on the on the glass here and a little bit around the the bottom then um, just be again to show that where the shadow is on this um, put some darker I'm sorry mixing some green with some of the black and put some of that down the left hand side to make this look like it is the dark side of the of the bottle and a little bit on the red um, screw top lid a little bit more down down there now do you remember what I said about the ultramarine blue again it, this must be something to do with the light that um, you can put in a bit of blue here to show how the light reacts with the wine or something I don't know how it works exactly um, a little bit with my with my hands okay I'm going to leave that for a bit now and I'm just going to try and put in some background and I also want to try and draw in at this stage where the wine glass is going to go um, I think I might use the I don't know if I I'm gonna have a drink <laughs> Cheers. Now, I don't know if Bob would use the little brush. I don't think he would, but I'm going to just try and use the little brush just to draw in this wine glass. And again, I'm going to start with the little um, oval at the top. And none of it matters if you don't get it right, because as you paint in the background, you can adjust it. You can adjust it then. And then I'm going to just draw. And the other thing that Bob says is that if your wine bottle or your glass turns out wonky, that looks better in the painting because it looks more painterly. So I'm going with that really. We're not trying to achieve a photograph here. Um, then we have a nice thin stem down here and a base. I don't know if that's right in terms of proportions, but I'm going to going to go with it. I'm just not enough of an expert to do that. All right, so let's try with the background. Well, that's got a pale blue background, and that looks quite good with the green. So I think um, we'll we'll try that as well. Maybe a little bit of yellow in there, and then lots of white. Make the background colours very light. The other thing Bob says is make sure you always mix your colours well on the palette rather than um, mixing them on the um, on the canvas. I think if I was doing oil painting, I would be inclined to mix them on the canvas. But for acrylics, it does seem to work better to um, if you if you if you do it on the if you mix them well on the palette before applying the paint. 
Okay, so now I'm going to have a go at We go to the tabletop about there. You can see that my water is already <laughs> already very dirty. But luckily so far I haven't put dipped my uh, brush in my precious glass of wine, so I'm quite pleased about that. Bob always says don't um, spend too much time on one area, just get, get it down quickly. And what I should probably be doing is using my bigger brush. Let's try that. Get this painted in very quickly. And oh, nearly put it in the nearly put it in the wine. Now just choose a colour for the table. I think uh, that works quite well there. That light green. So I might try that. So I'm just literally going to mix some um, white with the green, um, and maybe a little bit of yellow to make it a little bit more yellowy. But again, you can do anything that you feel works um, works well with these. Um, with the colour of the wine bottle. And we need a shadow for the wine bottle and for the um, for the wine glass. So we'll pop those in. And I think the wine glass would just have a very um, a very thin shadow. Okay, so that isn't finished, but it's a, a start for a um, for a wine bottle. And uh, what I'm going to do now is leave that to dry, uh, have another sip of drink, and then in part two, we will have a go at uh, uh, painting our glass, giving the impression of a glass of wine which again for me is quite a difficult bit uh, and um, and seeing how to finish finish off the painting thank you very much